go there so that I can read comments. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Good morning, morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. Just afternoon. I got to bend over to fix the. Sorry. Family channel. I don't, I don't Good know. afternoon, everybody. Those things need to be done in order to. For oh, to would you made. stop? <laughs> Um, good afternoon. I'm sorry it's taken a few minutes for us to get on here. Um, I was trying to get back to some families, and now Myra needs attention. <laughs> Myra. Myra, do you want to come over here? I'll, I'll go let her outside. I think um, but real quick, hi, Sue. Valerie, how are you? Beth, good afternoon to you. I hope you guys are having a good Monday. Amber. Oh, it's Canadian Thanksgiving? I didn't know that. Well, happy Canadian Thanksgiving. SS, how are you? Lisa, Mickey, you, I don't know if you're still on, but if you are, have, have, happy afternoon. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the kids are home from school because of Columbus Day. And I recently learned that Columbus Day, I didn't realize that Columbus Day was celebrated in a few other countries as well. And so... Um, we might not be the only country with kids home from school. Huh. Um, Jane, good afternoon. If I say morning, I apologize. Shelly, how are you? Oh, sorry. Jackie! Jackie! <laughs> this is my plant that you sent me on Mother's Day, and I've been taking really good care of it. Um, it is growing like crazy. You were so yeah. You had told me that you, you were disappointed that it was not bigger when it got in here. It was perfect. It's still perfect, but I want to show you how big it's gotten. So when I got it, it was about like this. So it was probably about as tall. The tallest point was like where this leaf is here. So it's gotten big. Um, we need to replant. And yeah, it's ready to be. It's like kind of slowing down probably because it needs to be replanted, and I want to do that so that I can use my mug. <laughs> but I thought it looked nice over here. So put it over here. Um, uh, I think I found most everybody. If I miss you, I'm really sorry. Oh, Waffle, if you're still on. Wait, what's the P member? Oh, that means somebody became a member. Patricia, Patricia thank you for clock. becoming a member. Yeah, thank you so much, Patricia. Um, you can check out the video. The link is in the description this morning. All the puppies were so cute. Um, what's really nice when we have a couple litters at the same time is we can share moms and little Mr. Lunar, Remy needed to go outside. Like she needed to do business and he had just started nursing. And so he wasn't happy. And I tried cradling him, snuggling him but when they're hungry. There's only so much we can do. And, um, and so I took him over to Robin. A lot of you guys know how much Robin loves to those opportunities. She loves and um, she was so sweet. She just loved on him. Nice. And she she cleaned his face and cleaned him all up. And then he he was actually like a little apprehensive at first. Um, you know, he can smell her. He knows that she's another mama dog. She's got puppies. He can smell the puppies. But he was like kind of apprehensive walking in or like crawling in between her legs. Mm -hmm. um, but once he got mm -hmm. cozy, he was happy as can be. And so Romy came back in and then she wanted to eat some more. And so I decided to let him continue to nurse since she was up eating. And I knew he was just, he was going to be even more upset if he heard her eating over here and she wasn't coming to him. So I let him hang out with Robin. Um, and then I brought it back and Robin or Remy, um, Remy can smell Robin on yeah. him. And not happy about we, it. Yeah. So like when she takes him back, she's, she won't be happy about it, but not, when it comes to the puppy, she loves her puppy and she, She's not happy yeah, she wants her puppy. But when we brought Robin through after Robin went to go outside, Remy had a few words to say. <laughs> and so those are just things that we have to be conscientious of. Um, um, Remy isn't, she's not going to like start a fight. She's very fast to back down, but the mama bear instincts, you know, those are strong. Um, but Drew and I, we did want to sit down and talk about, um, preservation. Oh, but there's a video of, um, it's a member's video that I put together this morning of, of doing, all right, go to your respective puppies, respective puppies. 
respected puppies, you go to your puppies. Um, um, and so, but anyway, about reservations. So, um, we have found over, over the, not really years, it hasn't been that many years, but over the litters, we have found, um, waiting lists to be a nightmare. Um, when you have a waiting list, essentially the, every puppy and every litter is reserved for the family at the top until they say no. And so, um, as you can imagine with, um, all the families we have, it's really difficult to, um, it's difficult to maintain because, um, a lot of families will decide to go to somewhere closer or they'll find, um, They'll find somebody who does similar to like what we do and they'll just get a puppy, you know, if they're closer. Um, or if they have like the litter that of colors that they have that we don't have, you know, some, you know, they just choose something else and kind of move on. Um, and, you know, they've reached out to so many breeders. We don't fault them for like not letting us know, but um, they've, they've too have spoken to so many breeders that it's difficult for them to come back and let us all know that they've found a puppy. So, um, it's just really inefficient in the sense that, um, we have to go one at a time and, um, we, when we have families that approach us and they're ready to get their puppy now, um, you know, there's a lot of situations when it comes to ESA puppies, especially, um, you know, when we were first looking for our Cavalier, we didn't have a year and a half to wait on a waiting list. We were looking for her for therapeutic reasons. And we needed her at the, like right then. Not, I mean, not right then, but we needed to find the puppy to put a deposit down on. And, um, and so like for those reasons, waiting lists just, they don't work. They're, mm -hmm. they're not compatible with the types of puppies that we're raising. Um, it's not like, um, it's not like you can just like place an order and we can pop out a, a Ruby girl for you yeah. with the, like this size. And, you know, so um, we found this system to work a lot better. Um, it needs improvement. It's not perfect. It's not perfect so. um, and so, and that's why we do have a few priority families. And so what that means is there's a few families who um, over the last like six plus months have been putting in for puppies and these and the litters that we've had and they just keep missing out. Um, and so we have a few families that um, because they've kept missing out, we let them choose prior to reservation day. And then um, as we get closer to reservation day, we'll make an announcement on which puppies those families have chosen so that um, all of our other families know which ones are no longer available. Um, but, um, it's, it's only, I think it's like three families and, um, uh, it shouldn't really, it shouldn't be an issue. Like every, they all seem to kind of want, all families kind of want a little bit of different things. And so, um, it's not like all the best puppies will be chosen. So don't worry about that. Um, we've got some really great puppies in these litters. The other thing is, and something else to consider is a great puppy to you might not be a great puppy to someone else. So very good point. Yeah. So some people uh, are, you know, they don't want a ruby at all. They, you couldn't, you couldn't pay them to take a ruby. But some people <laughs> think that rubies are the most wonderful coat color in the whole spectrum. So you know, it's it really is a. Um, I know it kind of sounds like when we say this whole first come first serve thing and and in the past uh the litters have been reserved like once we opened up reservations it, i think the fastest uh, an entire litter has gone was like the first 30 seconds after we we opened up uh reservations and so uh luckily we have you know three litters there's now there's a variety yeah, too there's a lot of variety so hopefully it doesn't mean um, that they'll be reserved you know real quick um and uh that was oh shoot um 
you were so close to hitting <laughs> on something. And a, a really good point that I was gonna. I was talking about how what um, what might be a good puppy oh. to use. Not yeah. um, somebody asked a really good question, and that was, does she need to put in order preference like this puppy, this puppy, this puppy? Um, and so we wanted to clarify that. If you, if there's just a certain coat color you were interested in and you are happy with any of the puppies, you can say, I just am looking for a black and tan. I don't care if it's a girl or boy, just one of the black and tans. This is the order that I came up with because I know it can be really hard to put them in order. Um, what was that? Oh, there. <laughs> um, and so we've had families that say, we just want a girl or we just want a boy. And then either they'll put them in order or they'll just say, um, whichever, whichever boys, you know, are not, um, other families aren't picking or, um, if it's, if it's something like we can decipher, we can determine a puppy. Um, it actually makes, it makes it a lot more flexible for families who do have, um, particular things that they're looking for, because if one family doesn't mind thumbprints or like missing, like, so like we have, a one of our doesn't have a thumbprint. And so if um, some families really want the tradi very traditional blenum, and so, you know, if there's one family that just wants a blenum no matter what, and then there's another family who either, they really want one of the girls that has the thumbprint, um, just if you just make that distinction, it'll make it a lot easier to, to determine which, which puppy should go to which family. Um, and with both fa families being happy with, with the puppy they received. So, um, if you have those sort of like parameters that actually is really helpful for us to help match you guys. Um, one big thing is that, um, so on reservation day, we, it, it's 1 PM central standard time is when we start taking, start accepting reservations. And, um, we ask to please only send us the one message because we keep them in order, the order that we received them. Um, and with this round, we'll be getting a lot of inquiries or a lot of requests. And so um, it'll it'll take it out of order. And we we don't want it to be, we don't want it to um, lose your place in line. Yeah, because in the past we um here, here's my okay, so we ask that you please, please, please um follow it this way because in the past we've had families send us messages at 59 so like at 12 59 and um we explained to them that we're, they were not going to be first in line because to resend their message at one o'clock because if all the other families knew that they were putting it at 12 59 and got to be in first you know first spot then the other families would have adjusted when they sent their message as well and so it, it's really unfair, and um, we we really want to. We are really big on just transparency, and we want to be able to show you guys the list of mess of families, yeah. and show you that you know we we went down the list as we said we would, and so we don't want. Um, we just ask for people to not um, not try to take advantage. Yeah, of, try to. To be, to game the system. Yeah, to game the system. That's a good way to put it. Um, yeah, because we, and, and what will happen is, is if you, you know, you're thinking like, oh, hey, I'll send mine just a little bit early. And if it comes in before one o'clock, you, your message will automatically go to the back of the line. Um, so it, please, please, please send your message at one o'clock. Have Set, it all yeah. typed up and ready yeah. to go so yeah. that like when the little ticker in the second hand goes past the 12, it's, you can yeah. just send it. Yeah. Um, you can send it right at one o'clock. We just ask for you to not send it before right. because yeah. that would really upset us. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we tried it, we try so hard to be fair, and so it's really hard to do this fairly. And so when we have a family come in and try to do that, it just it's kind of it's like insulting almost yeah. to the way we're we're trying to fair to everybody because yeah. everybody wants the puppy that they want mm -hmm. and um as much as one family want is eyeing their puppy another fi family may, might be eyeing the very same puppy um and everybody especially the families that are looking you know we have families where 
looking for ESAs. And so um, I would consider all of our families being like in need, if that makes sense. Um, a lot of our families really do need their puppy for mental health reasons. And so okay. um, this is really the most fair way we can do it. And again, with like the waiting list, um, that's another reason we want to, we want it, we do first Remy. come first serve because that way, yeah. you know, if somebody went through something traumatic over the summer and their therapist recommended a, an ESA dog, um, then they can pick their puppy up now. And so it has to be on a waiting list, be at the back of the line and yeah. on the waiting list and waiting for forever. It's... And what that would mean too, is that every time we have a litter, our families have been waiting for a year and a half or more. Yeah. I'm just throwing a year and a half out there. But with how many families we have contact us, if we had, if we'd been holding a waiting list all this time, geez, we had like yeah. a thousand people. I knew it. it would be such a long list. It'd be so difficult to go through every single one and be like, Hey, are you still just puppy? Hey, yeah. you're still just puppy. Yeah. So and it's, then it brings it, that brings up the next question is how long do we give them to respond before we move on to the next family? Yeah. And so that's why we don't do waiting lists. Yeah. Um, we know first come first serve isn't perfect. And it's also why we are doing the priority family situation because um, those people have been, there, there, there's one or two that have put in for like the last two or three litters and they have missed out. Yeah. So, and we realize that it's not, it's not easy for everybody to be typing real fast and be sending. It's not easy for everybody to be typing and sending and doing all this tech stuff. Um, we have a lot of retired couples. Retired couples are um, a family that we see often, and um, we can completely understand that you know their dexterity with their fear dexterity may not be at their finest. And so we don't want the way that we do first come first serve to inhibit somebody's ability to get a puppy from us. So um, that's why we have the priority families because these are some families that have been trying to put in and um, they keep losing out. And, um, and so we don't do it for just, it, it, that's something we do every time we have a family that misses out on a litter or else we would have a ton of priority families and we'd have a waiting list now. Um, we do this for families that have put in uh, multiple times um or if like we made an error because if there's been a in the past we've missed a family where they um they weren't intending on putting in for a puppy and then we missed them at reservation time and like we it was totally like we dropped the ball and so we made them a priority family you know that not currently but in the, in the past they we prioritized them on the next litter situation um, so um but sorry. i was gonna say um when you send us your your list, or when you're typing up your list prior to sending it to us at one o'clock, um, please only list the puppies that you want to take home. Um, so, like, you know, you'd have your your first choice, your second choice, your third choice. However many picks you have of puppies, send us all of them. Um, but don't just rank all. Susan, I was about to text you. Yeah, don't just rank all the puppies in order of the one you like the most, the one you like the least, um, because we have uh, we have had a situation in the past where um, we have families send us their their pick list, and unfortunately, they uh, yeah the. They were in line, or they were they were far enough back that they got like their third or fourth uh, choice. I have gotten your messages, Lisa. And then they said, we said, or we sent them a message saying, "Hey, uh, you got this puppy," and they said, "Oh, well, I didn't even want that puppy." Um, oh yeah. And so it disrupts the, the yeah the the flow the flow of things and. Um, and also puppies getting assigned. There was so. a family that we had to go back to a family and say, hey, we saw this puppy was on your list. And then that family turned out not to want him. Yeah. Do you still want him? Or do you want the puppy that you, that was after him? Yeah. And so yeah. only list the puppies that you, that make good backups for the puppy. Yeah. Um, Carrie, I saw your question. Um, so you don't take reservations, but there are reservations. Um, no, that's actually, that's not what we're saying. Um, the reservations are going to be on October 19th. The priority families are families who have 
put in for a reservation in multiple letters. times yeah. and they keep missing out. And so um, those families were kind of talking to um, ahead of time and just giving them, we're just prioritizing their um, picks since they've missed out so much. Um, and then on reservation day, then we'll open up the rest of the puppies to be reserved. So I would, we're not taking reservations. There aren't reservations. Um, we're just trying to make it, we're trying to make it fair for those who are not, um, for those who, who it's difficult for them to be um, reserving their puppy with the, this sort of like, it's not, um, they're having to race to message. And, you know, for some people who are a little bit older, that's really difficult. It's difficult to do, um, you know, in some generations that's just, Bones aren't their thing, and so we're trying. We're just trying to, we're trying to um, accommodate that, and that's why I said that we, we don't just do that for a family who has missed out on a litter. We only do it for families. Um, they're essentially it's an exception. Essentially, is that we do it for families who have put in over and over again, and they keep missing out because, um, because they're just not able to get in fast enough. And so, um, so that's what that is. And so we're just trying to, trying to keep it as fair as possible. We know it's not perfect, but it's the best way that we've found so far. Um, it's much better than the alternative, which is the waiting lists. And if we were like for a little bit of perspective, if we were going on a waiting list or if we were going by waiting lists right now, none of the families that are getting puppies or looking to get puppies from these litters would be able to get puppies from these litters because they would be probably six months to a year down the waiting list. Um, and so that's a, a big reason why we do it this way because, um, um, because there are some people who don't like how we, that we do it this way. They would prefer a waiting list, but I think that it gets, it gets kind of forgotten that if we did do a waiting list, if you were just reaching out to us now, you would be at the, end of the list you would be behind all the people that have been in touch with us um you know these last, last year or so so um that's one purpose of the first come first serve is that we can um families who approach us are able to choose their puppy you know we're expecting a litter and then their puppy is born and then they can choose their puppy um as opposed to having to just stop by put their name on a list and then wait for Wait for their name to be called. Um, is that okay? Poor Remy got so engorged yesterday that none of the puppies could latch, and eventually Blessing got it. Um, and Susan, I was about to text you this morning, um, and then I I opened up the text and I remembered what you had said about um, what you had said about why you were waiting, and so. Um, if just, I guess, text me and let me know kind of where you stand. Because uh, I, I was about to, it's so funny you said, you said something because I was about to message you earlier. And then I was like, oh, that's right. She was waiting because of the situation. And and so I didn't message you. But when you are ready, do let us know. Um, so um, what else? Uh, let's see. Ah, yes. Good question. Elizabeth's phone or Drew's phone? Um, Usually we will let you know which phone you're going to send it out so that people aren't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter, though, because we had to tell them in advance anyway. They need to know. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you just want to make it my phone since we know that my phone works with all phones. Um, well, I mean, so will we do the group text. Oh, send so it, does, to, it really doesn't really matter. So everybody, yeah, send it to both phones. Yeah, then. do it. So send it to both our phones, so both our phone numbers, because then it'll open up a group text. We're having difficulty with my phone delivering SMS messages. I can send a message to anybody with an iPhone, but when, or if, yes, yeah, and I can also receive messages from all iPhones and regular phones. I can receive everything, and so it took a while to figure out that um, the messages from my phone as SMS messages were not going through. And, um, but when I attach Drew to it, then they do go through. So I don't know what that's about, but it works that way. 
So actually send it to both of our numbers and it'll open up a, a group text. And then that way going forward, um, we have started to both be on the little text to chat. Um, and that way both of us are available to answer questions. So if you send something and ask for a video or a picture, if I'm not here, but Drew is, he can go get it for you. Um, or if I'm better versed at something, at explaining something, he'll ask me to field a question, um, stuff like that. And um, and a lot of couples will also add their um, wife or husband. Yeah. yeah. And so then it'll be like the four of us chatting. And it's actually, it's kind of, it's really nice. We really get to know you guys that way. Yeah. yeah it is nice to, to have like the whole, um, yeah, if it's your, 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 you and your spouse that are in, are getting uh, the puppy for your your family, it is nice to have both of you uh, chatting with both of us, so that we get to, to know you guys and your situation. And um, and then like that way, if um, husband is at work, wife is at home, um, you know, husband kind of he's in the loop if he can check his phone yeah. and see what's going on um, while. Um, their spouses at home so it's just it's um yeah let's do that because then it'll come in order and on both of our phones yeah so like it'll we'll just both have a copy basically of that yeah we'll do that. yeah so we'll, uh, yeah, i like that idea yeah if, like whenever you yeah however you send a text message normally uh just at the top where you know you put in you know, like Elizabeth's number, just also then uh, put in my number as well. So, and they're only one digit off. So, it yeah, should be pretty it's easy. pretty easy. Yeah. She's, um, if you need our phone numbers, you can find them on our website. I was just, we can just I mean, we can just say them. Yeah. There's phone numbers all over. Yeah. Um, so, um, because it's right on Google. Oh, that's right. It is. On if you, Google. if you Google Red Burn Cavaliers, you'll find the phone <laughs> number. Um, but, um, Oh, Susan, you're so sweet. It shows you guys are so awesome. I love this family so much. <laughs> Thank um, you, Susan. So my phone number is area code 815. I'm going to type it in. Yeah. 815 is area code 815-883-1134. Drew's is 815-883-1133. So the last, last four are the only things that are different. Uh, about our five zero. Yeah. Um, we usually we have it at our website because we don't want like bots and spam, mm -hmm. so it's kind of hidden on our website behind text and you have to find the hyperlink. So it can be a little tricky, so I don't want it to be too difficult. Yeah. Hey there, Linda, how are you? <laughs> John, <laughs> he says, I would not consider myself a priority family because I am not a family. He, he, I am me. <laughs> <laughs> you're a family because you're you and Rue. Yeah. I'm doing pretty well, Linda. What's going it's been on? a busy, busy couple of weeks. Oh, geez, it's been a busy week. Three litters in, what was it, five days? Three litters in four days? Oh, Beth said that, uh, looks like, it sounds like, um, uh, Kara shared pictures of Lucy. Oh, yeah. They... Lucy's pickup yesterday was so nice. Was so Her awesome. family is so wonderful. Oh, they gave us this oh. wonderful blanket. Whoa. It's a waterproof. It's another one of those waterproof blankets, but it's it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's huge and um, for you. it's a perfect backdrop for Christmas puppy photos. For Christmas puppy photos. Yeah. Isn't that perfect? It's nice and heavy, like Elizabeth likes, and so she's been snuggling. Yeah, I've been using it until the puppies start using it. I want to use it. Nice. It's a very nice blanket. They, they give us a blanket and a couple other nice things. It was really nice of them. Yes, thank you so much, Tara. If you're if you're on, you and and Lucy, we hope that Hi. you guys are doing well. Lucy. 
We hope that your uh, <laughs> that your travels back back home last night went. Uh, or no, they did. They did yeah. go. Yeah, they went very. Smoothly. Yeah, they said that um, Lucy used the we encourage the families when they pick up their puppies via airplane. We give them a little bag of pellets so that they have something to take into the airport, and we encourage them. After they get through security, when they're in their terminal, they find their gate to um, not too long before boarding to find a family bathroom and go into the family bathroom, pull out one of those towels from the towel dispenser and sprinkle some of the pellets just on the floor. And then um, tell them to go potty. They'll go potty right there in that little spot. And then you can just, just grab it, pitch it, and wipe up the spot. So, um, what? and what's nice is the pellets usually absorb most of what they potty. Huh? But um, it's really, the pellets really come in handy for flying. And we've even had families um, set up a tray in their, the trunks of their cars yeah. so they can pull over, just like at like a rest area. They can pull over even on the side of the road and put their puppy in the trunk and tell them to go potty. Who was it that um, did that last year? Um, oh, dang, because they were in a, uh, they, were in, so like a they were in an SUV. And they had it in the back of their SUV. Was it Indy? I think it was. I think it might have been. Yeah. Um, Indy's family's awesome. Good. Yeah, that was so funny. They had it all set up, ready to go with pellets inside. And, and what, baby? No, no candy. Oh, Sue. Sue says blanket matches Dude, Audrey's eating. harness. I call it her lumberjack oh, outfit. You have been doing nothing but eating. <laughs> No, no more food. Here. Um, so Shelly, um, I'm not sending, so here's the other thing, is that, can she, like, yeah. go somewhere? Um, so between now and Reservation Day, um, it is really inefficient to send individual videos to families. And I've been getting some questions. Um, for example, somebody uh, messaged me this morning asking for, um, pictures of a couple of Glenn girls. And so I was thinking of, um, when I get questions like that. So first of all, I'm, um, beginning tonight, I'm going to start working on videos, like more in-depth videos of each individual puppy to put on YouTube for, um, you guys to see and to look at and look at again. Um, because it takes up way too much space on my phone to send out so every time I send out a video to a family, it saves a copy, an additional copy of it in that um, the share with you part where you click on some on your person you're having a conversation with and you can see like everything you've shared together. And um, so when I send out videos, individual videos to individual families over and over again, it saves that same video over and over. And so uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to be putting together videos. They'll probably be initially like a video of Remy's litter and we'll pull aside each puppy and talk about each puppy. And then there'll be one for the other litters. And then we will do, um, um, some more of them like individually, individual puppies, individual puppies. And then, so like that question we had about the video asking for videos of the Blenheims, I'm sure there are a lot of families with the very same question. And so we will, um, we find it I, it'll, to be a lot more time efficient rather than typing up a text message to take a video and answer your question speaking in the video. And so that's what we've been doing and it's just so much more efficient. And so after I sent those videos, um, I think it was to Valerie, I was thinking um, what I'm gonna start doing going forward is um, you now she has to see two of the Blenheim girls. And so what I would well, do next time is, um, I was gonna actually make this video tonight of the Blenheim girls. Um, just make a video kind of answering her question, which was how they compare as ESAs together. Um, and just do a video of the Blenheim girls together so that anybody who's interested in the Blenheims can see them, the, each of them together side by side and kind of compare. And so that way, you know, there's, we've got probably, I think 90 to hundred families right now. Um, and so there's gonna be a lot of families that are interested in Blenheims. Blenheims are very popular. And, Daisy, um, come here. and it's just more efficient. And, um, but then when you, when some, when you inquire about it's that, okay. I can send you the link and it's already there. 
or hopefully maybe it answers your question already. But if you need something else, if you want, um, if you want something compared or, um, um, if you have a question that hasn't been addressed or, um, just let it be, don't be afraid to send us a message and we will do kind of what you suggested, Shelly. Um, I saw you suggest posting it in the groups on the um, members site. Um, but well, it'll be better on because on our members site we only have so much storage. Oh, and so but on YouTube we have unlimited storage. Really storage yeah. Um, so on YouTube I'll make playlists where we'll have it all organized. Um, and so don't be afraid if you have. If you want us to put something else together, comparing some, like maybe your mind's changed a little bit as it gotten bigger. And now you want to see somebody next to somebody. And so we'll make another video and you will just publish it on YouTube so that other people can see it too. Um, it's, it, the videos were wrecking my phone storage and we, we had to come up with a solution and, and YouTube is the solution because unlimited storage. Unlimited storage for the for our business. Yep. So, um, but yeah, the videos are all going to be posted on YouTube. Um, the groups, um, the, the groups is more for like uh, oh. informal, um, kind of like at home, behind the scenes sort of stuff. Um, but when families, a lot of families find us on YouTube and going over to our website is just an additional step. And so um, that's why we'll, post it all on YouTube, but um, the the essence, Shelly, of what you're getting at is what we're doing. Um, or is what, that's what we're going to do a little bit differently with this with this batch of litters. Batch of pups. Um, you know, because there's a lot of people, especially if they have a preferred coat color. Um, you know, we've got two black and tan girls and a black and tan boy, and um, the two, the girl and the boy right here, they look a lot alike. Robin's girl has a few different markings on her. And so it's, um, that's why we'll do like the litter videos and then we'll do like coat color videos comparing their coat colors. Um, and then we'll do, um, G uh, gender, gender. I was just thinking gender. Yes. So many girls. Yeah, so many girls. <laughs> um, and then the, um, and so I think, I think Remy's puppies are, I was hesitant to say that they were going to be bigger Cavaliers um, until we saw like their rate of gain. Um, but I do think they're probably going to be about Remy size. I don't think they're going to be huge necessarily. I just think that they're going to be, um, they're going to be just more solid. Like, you know, Remy, Macchiato is solid and Remy is like tall and lanky. And so I think that those two are kind of, they're blending nicely and, the puppies, they're, they got their legs and their torsos from their mom, and they got their density from their dad. And so they're just going to be, they're going to be pretty solid Cavaliers. I don't think they're, you know, Macchiato, he's a little bit bigger. He's 22 pounds. Um, Remy is 17 pounds, I think. And so I don't think they're going to be crazy big. They're not going to be like those 35-pound Cavaliers that look like they should be 25 pounds. Um, they're just going to be, they'll be on like the high side of average. Um, with Remy's first litter, I made the mistake that we were comparing Remy to Daisy. And so I was referring to Daisy as have, you know, being petite, she's petite, but then I was, um, con contrasting Remy as being big and we had families come over and be kind of confused because they were like, this is not what I was expecting is that they thought Remy was going to be much bigger. And, um, can you see Remy? Um, and we had one family actually say that, um, it actually worked out too. But one family said that if they had realized that she wasn't as, as big as she had thought, then she would have gotten a puppy from Remy. And so I just wanted to mention that. Hold on just one second. Um, and so when we say Remy's a big 
dog. We don't mean that she's like um, too big for the couch. <laughs> she's she's she sleeps in bed with us. She's um, she snuggles on our laps. She's not in macchiato too. He's really snuggly. Um, although he doesn't sleep in bed with us, but um, like they're all still couch dogs. Ooh. Um. Hi. Yeah, she's Remy has a pretty long torso, but she's also got long legs. You are very leggy, aren't you? But she's not that. She's I was trying not, to. Yeah. I was trying to. I remember all the families who came over and they were like, she's not that big. She's not that big. I mean, she's just, she's the, she's our tallest dog, but it's not like she's a great Dane tall right. or anything like that. She's just. She's the biggest of our moms. Yeah. And Macchiato's the biggest of our dads, but Macchiato's also got some short stubby legs. Yeah. He's got short legs. He's not very tall. Yeah. I mean, he's like normal tall, but he's. He's, normal he's not as tall as you'd expect for how dense he is. Yeah. He's, he is long and dense. Like, yeah, Macchiato is a little bit longer than. And Spike, but Rio is about the same size. Anyway, um, but okay. she is she's our tallest, and Macchiato is our heaviest. So it's like these puppies got. <laughs> it was like a stacked thing. This, yeah. Look how pretty I am. She is so stinking. She's too. so pretty. You need to stop because you're gonna. She upset. said no. Remy was okay. Oh, big oh, yawns. Big yawns. Hi. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Yeah. Mm. Yes. You go, Bobby. Mm. <laughs> she started to open her eyes a little bit. I, you know what? I thought I saw that when I was doing photos. Yeah, that, the left one was the one that was the, like the, yeah. the tear duct was starting to sink, and now the right, or I'm sorry, the other way around. Yeah. Um, we got to start potty training them, but we ran out of pellets. Yeah. Oh. We had all the, um, we had all those pickups and we miscalculated. So, um, we got to run to town and get pellets. Um, which is, we can stop and do that while we're in town. Um, um, can you think of anything else? Uh, did we set a date for a reservation October day? October 19th. October 19th. It's two weeks from, from October 5th. Yeah. So that's two weeks from Robin's. Robin's. Yeah. So puppies will be two weeks old. And um, Remy's will be. Was it two weeks and five six days? days yeah. Yeah, or two six weeks days. and six days. Yeah. Um, we hope that that will help you guys. Um, like we, we know a lot of people are, get anxious because you know, the litters are, are relatively small. Like we only had Remy's uh, litter going up for adoption. There's only four puppies and there's a lot more than four people or four families that I'm sure would like to adopt. Um, adopt Remy's, one of Remy's puppies. So we, we really hope that uh, having the three litters Will help people, you know, relax a little bit, and it's not such a uh, so stressful. Yeah, not such a stressful day on reservation day. Um, and also, if you've sent me a message and you haven't heard from me, do not worry. I do have it. <laughs> um, I've been. Um, I've had to kind of so I in the mornings is where we do lives is when I get try to get caught up on messages. Um, the weekends are tough because we have kids home. And also we've had pickups. And so it's really, the pickups have really been kind of a wrench in this right now. Um, we are doing our best to make it work. Um, and so we're down to three uh, in Missy's litter. And one of them is going to be staying for a little bit. So um, I think we've got a pickup tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but it's kind of, it's slowing, it's calming down. And so after I've got some errands to do with May today, but. When I get home tonight, I'm going to um, start putting together videos of the puppies um, by coat color. And so, like, we'll do the Blenheim girls 
We'll do the black and tans. We'll do the tricolors. We'll do the blue merles. Um, and then little Miss Ruby. Oh, she's. <laughs> and they have a whole video all to herself. Yeah, so she gets her own video. <laughs> I love her. I There are so many puppies I want to keep. And <laughs> I'm usually really good with yeah. the puppies being like, nope, they got um, this there I go. family. Yeah. And um, lately, it's Macchiato's puppies that do it to me. Mm. He's, it's ever since he started, he entered the entered the fray. Cycle, yeah. yeah. Um, but what I'm what I'm getting at is that um, I know it's been kind of slow going, and you guys have probably been um, expecting more by this point, and we really apologize. We've been so busy and um, distracted, but now that we've um, got a p- couple of pickups behind us. Um, we're going to have more time for videos, for messaging, um, and we'll start getting caught up on some of those messages. And um, it'll also help, too, when you guys can see more videos of them that are not just from the live stream that are um, of the individual puppies. And we're talking about their personalities. Um, there's things I've been seeing with um, with Myra's puppies and... Um, Robin's puppies, it's just something I've noticed so far. So Robin's puppies are four days old today and Myra's puppies are six days old today. And um, Myra's, so Myra's puppies, if Myra's not there, they'll, they'll crawl into my hand. And it's like, it's one thing that Drew and I have noticed is like one of their first things that they'll do independently without our, um, without us suggesting it is they'll um, come crawl into our hands and kind of nuzzle and um, they'll sometimes they'll sit and go to sleep. Uh, but we just kind of like hold our hands at like a little ramp and they'll crawl up. And so Myra's puppies are beginning to do that already on their own. Um, but only when Myra's not there. Robin's puppies, on the other hand, if Robin's there, like little Ruby girl and little Blenheim girl, they'll still come they up. love like coming up and... Yeah. Um, nuzzling they don't like they so if i'm the puppy going up drew's hand they come up and they just continue nuzzling they just want to get closer and closer yeah whereas myra's puppies they'll come up her hands and then they'll just kind of like like they'll uh, they'll settle and go to sleep um that continues to like evolve like myra's puppies will they will start um not detaching from mom but they'll start opening up to us more yeah um however we do notice that kind of like the earlier and the more um, apt they are for people just tends to be a bit of a trajectory for how people oriented they are as dogs. Like when it comes down to like the core of their personalities. Um, And so that's just, it's just one thing I've noticed that I mentioned, um, I think to Valerie. And so I just wanted to put it out there for um, the rest of you. Yeah. That, um, Robin's puppies have already really been exhibiting this this really big people. Uh, they're very people driven already. Hi. And I've been very impressed because they're only four days old, which that's how um, yeah. busy puppies were. Yeah, yeah. They're, At four days old, they were already people driven. Yeah. And so, yes, yes. I... Um, Myra's puppies, though, they're also really good puppies because when we, so they might not be coming to us on their own, but when we do cradle them, they are soothed by like when we hum to them. Um, can you guys see her? <laughs> Don't be mean to her. <laughs> what about these guys? Mean old daddy. These guys are mean old daddy. These um, let's see. They are. They are already. I would say that they are, like even with um, run me around. They're starting to get playful. Um, Mira and well, Mira and Blessing are. Lunar, well, he was he was hungry this morning. Mm-hmm. Say, so Lunar was not very comforted by me this morning, but he was he had literally just started nursing, and then Remy had to get up and go poop. So he was upset. Understand? Would you um, stop? Don't he was care. upset, understandably. Um, yeah, I just want to see how she responds when I take her away from mom. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Your your dog is not happy about this. Who's a good girl? I have noticed that these guys um, are very 
or they, they are they seem to be people driven. Yeah. Um, Jude. So like she's not crying to go back to mom. She's actually um, with yeah. She's twisting around. She's not twisting like she's not twisting trying to get out of my hands. She's twisting like sniffing and kind of messing up my fingers. So earlier today, Jude. No, maybe it was Lunar. I can't remember. It was one of the boys. Um, but they were like, like not barking, but they're doing their little, oh. like doing the little house. And I was howling back to him, and uh-huh. he was answering like that. We were going Aww. back and forth. Where I'd be like, like he'd be like, and I'd be like, I would, I would wow. imitate him, and then he would make a different noise. Oh, are you starting to flush now? So she's a bit of a mama's girl. So I, I really oh, thought she yeah. was going to fuss when I picked her up. Um, and took her away from mom, but she, I'm so impressed that she didn't. Pretty hard. Um, me. But a little disclaimer when we talk about um, the puppies being more people driven when they're younger, being more of like a more, um, just being a better predictor of good ESA qualities. It doesn't mean that the puppies that take a little bit longer doesn't mean that they'll do bad ESA puppies um, because they all kind they all go through that transition at some point because it's just in their nature as cavaliers. Um, you can't you can't go wrong with a puppy with a cavalier puppy. Um, and if so, if we if there's a puppy that we were concerned about not making a good ESA dog, we would we, we will tell you. Um, and so. Because we have families that aren't necessarily looking for an ESA dog, and so that's kind of where we try to um, we try to we do their temperament testing to see kind of where they fall in in terms of like um, how dominant or submissive they are, and how um, uh, hi, are you looking for Mama? And then all you found was me. Oh, but she's happy. Yeah, she's happy. No, Jude. Good boy. Good boy, Jude. So that's kind of what we're talking about, is when mom leaves, are they comforted by us? Good boy, Jude. And now mom comes back. So what does she do when mom comes back? She she want to go back to mom, or does she want to stay here? Oh, yeah. Hi, good boy. Now they're going to potty you? See this? He, he was like lifting his ears up. Oh. He was like perking his ears up when I was sitting here chatting. Good boy. Yeah. Blessing is really passing the test. Look at that. She knows mom is right here and she's not trying to reach out for her. In fact, mom putting her just put her to sleep. Good boy, Jude. Good boy. Now she's going to nibble on my finger. Good boy, Jude. She's, she's so sweet. Oh and so these are some of the things that we look for is um, when they have the choice between mom's comfort and our comfort, which do they choose? And Blessing is quite a mama's girl, so I'm really surprised that she she's doing so well with us. You're such a good girl. She was falling asleep with my hands. That cozy, comfy. You are such a good girl. We've had puppies in the past where um, if we're holding them and mom's right there, if mom leaves, they, they will, will yell. Out. They will freak out. Yeah. Freak out. And I feel like that's like, as time goes on, we don't see that as much. Yeah. I, I wonder if it's just because we handle them. Maybe. Yeah. You know, when we first started, we were, we were like, we shouldn't handle them at all. We need right. to respect we, nature. Yeah. We need to let mom, you know, them. them connect with their mother um which is important that is important in the early the early beginning those first few days we try to really stay hands off mm-hmm. um, as much as we can but after those first few days once they've transitioned to the outside world outside of the womb um it's actually pretty important that we handle them because we want them to know they're going to live their lives with people being people dogs and so it doesn't interfere with their relationship with their mom in terms of like development um, well, really, it doesn't interfere with the relationship with mom at all. 
all it really does, it just helps them get to know people and people can be trusted and they're safe and they're a source of comfort. You can see Blessing, despite the mama's girl that she is, she's learning that she's learning that we are pleasant to be around and pleasant to be held by. Mm-hmm. And like the when we have puppies that are um not as people driven, we will do these sorts of things with them to help them see that that people. Yeah, that, yeah, that people are trust trustworthy. Look at how cozy she is. <laughs> oh, dude. Are you talking to me, Jude? Oh, I love you. <laughs> Man, Jude. if we were looking for a blend of mom. Jude. Jude. <laughs> you are so beautiful. Good boy, Jude. Good boy. Oh, oh, oh. Down for a minute. Oh, you're you're so cute. She's laying like Superman. <laughs> Blessing is a salad dog. Yeah. Mira is quite a bit lighter than Blessing. Yeah. Now that's relative to quite a bit lighter than Blessing. Doesn't mean she's Mira size. Yeah. Right. A girl in the room. Oi. What time are we ready? Did you guys? Um, as soon as we're done going over this stuff. Okay. Sorry, did anybody have any more questions? Let me look. Uh, Jean says everyone knows the camera adds five pounds. Yes. <laughs> this Sue says or ten, and then Jean says yes, Sue. I was going to say ten, but I want it to be nice. <laughs> Oh, no Jean, thank you. She says, Elizabeth and Drew, we just want to say your talks are informative and warm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> What's that? If a family consists of a laid back boy and needy, jealous girl, would you suggest a boy puppy or a girl puppy? <laughs> <laughs> um. That would really depend on which genders the 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 boy and the girl are. Wait. The family consists of a laid back boy and a jealous girl. Would you suggest a boy puppy or a girl puppy? So their family has a wait, like needy, but do you have a, a, a needy, dogs or yeah. children? Yeah, are you talking about yeah, dogs or children? You have a needy boy dog. You find that boys are more lovable than girls. Very good question. Yeah. So, we have found that um, girls tend to be a little needier. Um, boys tend to be a little more chill. Um, the girls tend to just need a little more reassurance. Remy. Um, and Remy. It, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's Say like mom. he heard you call mom. Mom. Remy. Remy. He's got the um, we found that the boys tend to be just a lot more snuggly and affectionate on yeah. their own. Yeah, there you go. That's the right word. Whereas, like, the girls, um, they're just as snuggly and affectionate, but a lot of times we need to go initiate it. Um, and that's where being, like, a good ESA kind of comes in handy, comes into play, because a good ESA will recognize when you need their presence and they'll come to you to provide that affection. And, um, and so that's why we want them, we want our good ESA dogs to be very people driven. Um, they get very attached to their people and like Daisy, where are you? Um, if Drew and I were to start arguing and she hears my voice getting like stressed, she'll like be down here right at my side and like with, before I could even think to go get her. Um, which is a good thing because a lot of times if you are a really anxious person, if you have an anxiety disorder, like I do, um, you are probably, you probably know what I'm talking about when I say that, um, when you're in the throes of anxiety, you're not sitting there thinking like, okay, I'll go, let me go take my meds. Let me go do this. Let me go do all these things that I use for my anxiety. Because when I'm having an anxiety attack, I don't think to go grab Daisy. It just doesn't even occur to me because I'm so... I'm just so scared. Like, I'm just, you know, having my anxiety attack. I 
your brain can't think properly when when it's just surviving. And so what's great about a good ESA dog is they recognize that and then they come to you. And so um, it's one thing that's been really helpful for May because May, um, she'll, Remy, she's taking after Missy. Oh, jeez. Remy is digging under our bed. Um, May's, when May has anxiety attacks, um, I'll, I'll say to her, you know, did you take your meds? Where's Paris? And I'll, you know, list off the things and she'll just be like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Like she'll, it just doesn't, it doesn't occur to us when we are in such a frazzled emotional state, um, what to do. And so like before I had Daisy, Drew would always, where's your meds? Where's your, where's this? Where's I would, that? I would be your, your emotional support unit. Yes. Yeah. You still are my emotional right. support unit. Uh, so SS said dogs have a needy, or, okay. uh, yeah, a needy girl. A back boy, a needy jealous girl. Would you suggest a boy puppy or a girl puppy? Um, hmm. I, I would probably do another boy because if you had another girl and you already have a needy jealous girl, I think she's gonna probably feel uh, like you're replacing her with another female. See, see, I would take a different. Age. Oh well, yeah. I would say rather than looking at the gender, I would say just look for a more submissive dog. Mm. Look for one that is going to um be okay with your needy girl, your needy jealous girl needing to be number one. And then um yeah. you know, if you're a laid back boy, then yeah, we'll get along well with yeah. the with the more laid back puppy. Because some of the girls can be laid back and chill too. Yeah. And so um I wouldn't limit yourself to a boy like what Drew said is I would I agree with that. But if there's a more submissive girl, yeah. Um, you don't need to rule out girls, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's and Elizabeth brings up a really good point is really don't look at it so much as uh gender, like boy versus girl. Maybe look at it as submissive or or dominant. Aw, Minnie's such a good therapy dog. I love how much John loves Minnie. Oh! <laughs> um, Jan, our moderator Jan, has Minnie from Paris's, is that right? Minnie from Paris's litter. And um, she got Minnie, and when they first picked her up, we were all like, this is going to be John's dog. And sure enough, <laughs> it's John's dog. <laughs> it's almost like... Um... <laughs> oh, you're so funny. She, she has John just wrapped around her little finger. It is so sweet. Um... I'm trying to think of what else to say. Um, once I get my errands out of the way this afternoon, we're like, we can take a breath finally. Um, I feel like we've been trying to like white knuckle through this, trying to do everything all at once. And what's happening is we're in the process, we're getting much less accomplished because we're just trying to jam it all together. Um, I was trying to start the live streams and do the pickups and talk to YouTube, like, and then. The end result was um, we never even got to talk about reservations. So uh, now that now that we've got three of the pickups out of the way, it's it's less stuff that we need to get ready for, and uh, um, the three puppies are a lot easier to handle. In fact, we will start bringing them into the kitchen to hang out with the older dogs, and that'll be really good for them, um, manners wise and socialization wise um and then it'll be we drew and i will have the ability to focus more on um our upcoming puppies and our upcoming families or incoming families you guys are such good puppies. i wonder if the camera could stretch over myra's puppies i'm gonna actually i'm gonna grab I'm gonna... 
I just wanted to bring it. This is Myra's little Lenum girl. Um, so generally speaking, somebody asked about their sizes and generally speaking, I would say that you could generally, again, they're, they're still really young, but generally if we were to, um, gate, compare their sizes, um, down the line, Remy's, you can probably anticipate to be the biggest, Robin's in the middle and Myra's smaller. Um, now, Myra's, like her tricolor boy, he's a little bit on the heftier side, but her blue Merle girl right here, she's still pretty petite. Her blue Merles were, um, were really little when they were born. She was 166 and the boy was 142. Um, they're gaining really well. Um, but I still, I think that they're going to be just on the on the lower end of average as adults. Um, these guys are are they six days old? Yeah, six days old now. And so, if you think about when they were turning a week old, they were much bigger than this. So um, I do think that Myra's are going to be on the smaller side, but. Um, not necessarily the her tricolor boy. I think he might be more like a robin size puppy. You're such a good mama. You're such a good mama. You want to potty her? Oh man, you're gonna go make Myra go crazy. Good girl, Myra. You're such a good doggy. And you're a good girl, Remy. I love how they take care of each other's puppies. Oh boy. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. No, that's, that's Robin's house. Oh. We all done? Oh. <laughs> You're such a good mama. Myra and Remy do get along very, very well. As their puppies get older, we're really looking forward to combining them and letting them all play together. Now, I don't think we'll be able to combine them like pen to pen, but we'll be able to bring them out of their pens and like bring them together on the floor in between their pens. Oh, I think um, I, mean, I mean, like while they're still in our bedroom. Oh, I don't yeah. I don't think Remy is going to let her puppies go over to Myra's pen. Yeah. But like if we pull everybody out and put them on the rug right here, that's kind of what I mean. You guys can see what I'm talking about. So the blue Merle boy is about the same size as um, her blue Merle girl. And so you can see um, why I think that her tricolor boy is just going to be a hair bigger. Because he's about the size, close. he's closer to a robin puppy size. You guys are so squirmy. You want to potty them? really want their butts. He's got a weenie. He's a boy. He's got a weenie. She really wants to body them. Such a good girl, Remy. I'm so proud of Myra. She's just over there nursing her other puppies. Even though this one's crying. Can you potty him? Can you potty him? Oh, I'm sorry, we're still working on him. Oh, now Myra wants him. Alright, we're running out of time. We're running out of time. Mom wants him back. Curfew. Um, and before I am busy for 
the afternoon. I'll get the other streams going, the side by side, so that you guys can see um, the other puppies. I want to, um, I wanted to put the big puppies in the kitchen with their girls for a bit. Um, but I will get the. What's that? I'm just trying to plan since I'm just, gone. Just these two. Let's just do these two. Okay. Because I'll spend a little bit of time with the, the last three puppies. Oh, we know what? Last three puppies. Oh. To make a thumbnail. Back while you're gone, while you're home, give them their shots. I brought the two boys over, so um, I think it's kind of hard to see on the camera when they're like the there's the distance between them and the yeah. camera, and they're not exactly the same distance between each other. Right. All right. Let me get some photos. And Remy, put your puppies. Remy, no. Put your puppies. Damn. Remy, go. Go watch your pups. Come on, baby. Come on. Go, go, go. Go, go. Come on. Take care of your puppies. You're bumping the camera. Oh, you're small. I mean, I'm a... Last few days, I don't know, I only get pictures of her and, like, awful baby pose. She's just... Yeah, she's all over the place.
So Jean, um, um, oh, SS, real quickly to answer your question. We do, by the calls around, we do actually have, do have a pretty good idea of the puppies kind of from more dominant to less dominant. Um, that's one of the nice things about having the litter together is we can see kind of in the ways that they treat their other natural, untrained instincts um, lead them. Like, do they, are they driven to, to nipple steal when they're looking for milk or when they see a nipple occupied, do they go around the puppy and find another one? Um, those are things that we watch for. And then that's also what we do temperament testing for. And so like over these, um, like over this next week and a half, um, you'll see a lot more of that from us. We'll be able to tell you guys more information. Um, and you'll see us doing kind of being more in the pool with them, doing some of these things with each of the puppies. Um, now that we don't have so much on our hands. Um, unfortunately, the kids are off of school today, so we're still busy with kids. Um, but like tomorrow and for the remainder of the week, you'll see see us doing a lot more with the puppies to determine more personality information. Um, we're, we're so excited because of the all the puppies are so great. Um, even in Robin's litter, I know the puppies, like usually with six puppies, there's always a nipple stealer. And we don't have any nipple stealers in her. But not yet, anyway. I mean, they're so young, but um, usually there's somebody that wants to, because it takes work to get the nipple going. And some of the puppies just don't want to do it. And so they'll wait for somebody else to like prime it and then they'll take it over. And especially when they've already all um, basically had their fill from... They drink everything that there is to drink in one nipple, and then they want seconds. Um, they usually want seconds to like fall asleep with, and that's when they'll get kicked off of nipples. Is when there's another puppy who is more dominant. They'll come over and um, they'll knock the other puppy off, and so that they can use it to pacify to go to sleep. And so, um, whereas a less dominant puppy will just kind of give up and they'll get cozy between mom's legs, for example. Hi. You are so cute. I need to get set up. It's so hard to not get distracted by the puppies when I'm setting things up. Robin? Robin? Robin is growling at Myra through the glass door. This is why we have Robin in the, the closet. We had to pick somebody to put in the closet, and so it, it had to be the mom that wants to mom a puppy. Because if we didn't have her in the closet, she'd be out here trying to take over the other puppies. So we only had her over in the spot, like literally for the delivery, because if we... If we hadn't set her up for the delivery over here, then mid-delivery, she would have been coming out here trying to relocate her litter. And so, like, when they get their eye on a delivery spot, that's where they're going to welt their puppies. And we just started welting all of our litters right here in the spot. And so Robin, really, she welts her puppies, like, in this spot. Not right up against the fireplace, but just off to the side. But on the side, not that side. Oh, hey, sweetie. Oh, um, I'm sad because I am busy doing this and I'm really to get the sun so I can take my well, I'll go ask God what, what, what we've got that you can have. Say no. Why would he say no? The last day labor. My saver. Well, that's all right. It's like a snack. A life saver is not a snack.
I'm good for serving. Why don't you go have a snack, sweetie? I got a snack. Grab a bag of chips. Candy. Oh, well, if you're hot, if you're starving, candy's not going to help. I just need to think of candy. My wearing my lanterns. I'm not stepping on toes with them. Okay. I'm wearing just my lanterns. Lift them. Bring us some lanterns. Lift them. Hmm. Wearing just some lanterns. I don't. I don't care who. Should be able to have these split screen up shortly. Got the listing up, so. Hey, Drew, where'd the RBC phone go? Where'd the RBC phone go?
All right, almost ready. Got the two phones. The two phones going. There. So we are looking right now at Robin and her puppy. They are Robin's puppies are four days old. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we just got five girls and one boy. They're probably the future of this family. Um, Robin even helped to nurse one of Robin's puppies. Um, and then we've got Ryan who's pregnant here. This is a regular boy. He, whenever he's cold, he kind of crawls away from the group and gets cozy in the blanket. It's a little cute. <laughs> There's a little brown girl. You've got two girls, two boys. Colors of girl and the gray colors of the boy. Um, and then our dogs, like the pack of dogs, not the pack of dogs, and the puppies born, they are all on like super stylish. They want to hit everything. Um, it's like as a captivating, you know, to um, puppies, uh, visitors. So, um, if, if there is, it's interesting dog behavior, um, how protective they are of each other. Oh. And the moms, they really do kind of look for each other rather than um, so sweet this morning. Where Remy went to potty, and Remy, Remy had to go outside Remy, and go to potty, and Luna was going for Remy needed to go outside. And so it wasn't any good to him while she was there. So we put him over with Robin, and she just took him right in. Um, I think I did. She came in, I put him right here, and he just came in like that, and cleaning, and he crawled under her arms and went in the middle. And he blended right in with the group, except he was like two and a half times their size. So it was really pretty funny because they're all about this size, and then we are. Big, not too big. He's having a small litter and he's not small. He's having a litter of one. There's a lot of development that they miss out on. They don't have other puppies to be weaving through and around. They don't they miss out on a lot of opportunities for um, social learning, social behavior. These puppies in their barn, they're better for social and litter mates to learn some of the basic things. Um, it, it makes it difficult <clears throat> to go forward from there to like build on that when they don't have some of these really early answers that men have. And so it's recommended in, in like the breeding world <clears throat> if you have a, 
a litter, if you have a mom who only delivers one, or if you have a mom who has puppies that don't make it and you are down to one, it's recommended that you can find another breeder that has a litter that's even just somewhat close in age. It's better for the puppy to um, let them slide in with that litter so that they have the other puppy. Puppies who are raised as a one puppy litter um, have been reported to have issues with like behavior issues. You know, um, luckily, we've never had a litter of one, um, but I can see, I can see why it would be. You know, I know it's fine, but it would be a possibility, but it makes sense. You know. Child can. And so for animals, it's just a lot more important than it is for people. You'll see a boy just pulled it over with this a lot. But I remember my really cool puppy. Not every time, but most times, <laughs> she's um, walking seven out of her pen to the like, potty. Um, you know, she's leaving, she will cover them up before she leaves. And so, if you ever look on the stream, look at the camera, and you don't see any puppies, they're probably underneath the blanket. Um, she frequently has Robin giving her space on the back door here. And Oh, you want to get going? <laughs> wow, Robin, you're making our girl seem mad like that. You want to see how I have over there? It looks like it. Um, I have it set up such that we kind of need the overhead on. No. He is such a chunk. Hi there, Free Savage. Uh, don't worry, other people will be playing with us. Usually, when we first start it, um, if it hasn't, the stream hasn't been up. Whatever he had, Robin and Myra both told me that they had puppies. Um, the first three days after they're born, we keep them about 115 degrees, 120, depending on what you're doing. Um, after three days, we usually bring it down to like 110, um, five, and then right, right now, I think they're down to like 100. Because um, it starts making mom hot, and so they, um, as the days pass, they get better and better at regulating. And then they learn to uh, make puppy piles and learn how to serve heat in that way. And you know, we don't want them to be dependent on any being bad, but we have to go the way it's very good. Yeah. Did Ryan cover them up? Or was that you? Oh, I intentionally had them on the old.
You're such a good girl, Remy Dog. All right, so if you, I have the other puppies streams up. If you wanted to check in on Myra or Robin, do you guys see him? It's just upside down. Okay, let's fix this a little bit. You got this all wonky. <laughs> She's laying on like this. There we go. That's better. Let me see. Okay. Let me see. See how many. Myra. Is there anything that you can think of that would be um, I mean, I know we need pellets and all that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about it. Well, I could probably find ten sources. Yeah, I think you can make your own pellets. Is 
What's wrong? What's the problem? Can you go outside? Hey, no, no, no. 
Oh, you're fucking in time. Come on.
I see what you did there, Remy Remy. So, uh, all right, let's see here. What are these guys today? Uh, first of Jude. Sorry, Jude. Hold on, big boy. Jude, last time we weighed was 1.4 or 1 pound 4 ounces. Today, holy mackerel, he is 1 pound 8.2 ounces. Jeez, ladies. This blessing. Blessing. His blessing was one pound eight ounces. Oh my, okay, okay, I hear you. Goodness, hold on, hold on. Right there. It is one pound 11.4 ounces. Holy, it is always.
All right, Mr. Lunar. Sorry, buddy. No, you're enjoying that nipple. Off you go. So Lunar was one pound five ounces. What's what say you today, buddy boy? Oh, I know, I know, you're upset. You're upset. One pound eight ounces even. So he is exactly one uh, one and a half pound. Yeah. Oh, you, you good big boy. You should big boy. You go, good big boy. Oh, you're so, you're so sweet. And Mira, come here, Mira. Ow, all right, Mira. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, goodness. Oh, my. You're one pound three ounces. Let's see what you're at today. Right there. One pound 6.2 ounces. Pound of six point two ounces. Good girl. So looks like everybody put on uh, at least uh, three ounces. Wait, cow! Lot of puppy. That is a lot of puppy for being only ten days old or whatever it is. A lot of puppy. All right, moving on to Miss Myra's dogs. All right, Miss Myra. Okay, so let's put the brand. Okay. So first up is blue. Blue. Blue was two hundred and ninety-eight grams. Here's the blue again. Is three hundred and seventy. 378 grams. Hush. Right, purple. So purple on the mirror says 246. Today. Okay. 462. Three, three oh two, three oh two, three hundred and eighty three. Orange, so this says orange was three forty yesterday. <laughs> Blue is bigger. It's okay, big boy. It's okay, big boy. Oh, you're already trying to sit up. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. Okay, no, that was wrong. Four hundred and ten grams. Four 
Wayne puppies right now, baby. I'll be out in a little bit, okay? I'll be out in a little bit. I'm texting mom. You can go to the Remy, lay down. Remy, Is Dad coming here?
Come on, if you want a snack, then go to the right person. 
Yeah, that's still charging. Oh, that's fine. You can go and charge it because it's not. Okay. Can we do this? Mm-hmm. Why not? I can't see you. I can't see you. Can I have one? Oh. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have. It turned on. Oh, Dad, you're a liar. Well, it didn't turn on. It's still on. I need you
Yeah. Puppy. Hold on. Dad, the live dance, see you. Take no, it. No, stop. No. Yes, yes, I will. Oh, there, hold on. There, hold on. Yeah. Are we making? Oh, God. No, you gotta take a shower, kiddo. You gotta take a shower.
Remy. Remy, where are you? Remy, you don't know the bed. Remy. Remy. Remy, I'm right there. Remy. Alright, dry off, Bill. You dry off. What are you doing out there? Remy.
Oh,
Thank you.
is offering from a trophy.
I heard you, I heard you. Here, you want to wear this one? Who's here? Here, wake up back. I'm back, Bella. I heard you. Bella, I'm back. No, dog. Bella, come here. Stay off of me. I'm going to fall.
Who needs food? Who needs food? You need food, you need food. Careful, you just jump on all your puppies.
Oh, you smell like poo. Why are you going? You're such a good girl. You're such a good girl. Who is a good girl? Who is a good girl? Who is a good daisy? 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 Oh, who is a good girl? Who's a good daisy? Who's a good daisy? Oh, daisy doodle loo, daisy doodle loo. Who's a good daisy? Girl. Here's a good girl. Yeah, please, you are, you are. Are you excited to eat? Are you excited to eat? You want to eat? Are you hungry? Are you hungry? You want to eat? You still have room in that tummy with all that poop you ate? Huh? That's so gross, Daisy. That's so gross. That's so gross. That's so gross. Hi, Myra. Are you hungry too? Daisy. Oh, who's a happy girl? Who's a happy girl? Who's a happy girl? Who's a happy girl? Who's a girl? Who's a good girl? Huh? Who's a good girl? Daisy? Daisy Daisy? Daisy's a good girl. Daisy's a good girl. Yes. <laughs> okay. You aim too well. You're such a you're so good at aiming. I just don't want to spit in my mouth, that's all. Yes, you're a good girl. Come here. Do you want to snuggle? Do you want to snuggle? Hi. Who's a good girl? You're a good girl. Yes, you are. Aw, yes. You want a belly rub? Who's a good baby? Huh? You're a good baby. Leo is becoming a spoiled boy. He was a bargain not eating his food, and he was so happy when I let him in. And then when I put his food down, he really wasn't that interested in eating, eating, but he ran over to the gate and started like wagging his tail like mad and looking up the stairs. So he's 
He is. He is enjoying the. Uh, I don't know how many may even fits in the bed with an extra, extra two XL dog bed. Yeah, the, uh, and then a two XL Paris. Yeah, two, yeah, a double XL Paris and a double XL Rio. Rio sweet. Well, he's more like a regular man's extra large. Oh, yeah. She's like a two X women's plus size. There you go. Yeah, maybe it's like you know, she has to lay in fetal position. <laughs> Remy, go eat your food. Remy, go eat your food. Go eat your food. I understand you want loves. You are so silly. You're so silly. Oh, you want the dogs too? Did you get jealous of Daisy, huh? You're jealous of Daisy, you get the dogs too. You want the dogs? You want the dogs? Oh, at least you weren't eating food. I uh, can get on board with Kish and Matt, babes. Uh, oh. Yes. 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 I have no idea. I just found it over there. Oh, okay. Singing songs to you. Look. 
look at this face. He has like a blockhead. Oh my god, he's so sick. And his, um, his nose is a little bit more teeth than his Yeah. Oh, part. Cutie, how are you? Oh. oh, um, anybody listening on YouTube, if you look at our stud, the, the page with our boys on it on our website, the picture of Macchiato on there was taken when he was like 11 weeks old. And so you can see what Macchiato looked like when. Um, right after we brought him home, we we didn't get bring him home until he was like eleven weeks. Um, and the picture where he he's like laying on his side, I think, with a tennis ball. Um, it's a really cute picture. Um, in the kitchen. Look at that smile. You have a little oh, smile. That? Boys are outside. Oh, are you I wanted to point out was something I love about her markings is that Rio's face is almost his markings are almost identical um, on the cheeks because his left cheek, um, the way it comes back a little bit in the chest, you know, right here where cheekbone is, and then but on his right cheek, it comes down a little bit more, just like hers does. Hers comes down a little bit more on this side, but the way it comes back on this side. And Rio's is the same way. One cheek is chestnut and one cheek is white. We need to start like compiling um, the puppies we've had with different parents so that you guys can look up um, if you're like, curious what the puppies look like from. Different moms versus different dads. You know, there's a Blenheim for Robin and Spike, and then there's a Blenheim for Robin and Macchiato. And so it's just interesting to compare them side by side. And, um, you know, the traits they get from Robin are going to be the same, but, you know, what they get from dad is going to change. They're growing so fast. Oh my god. This one reminds me so much of Boo from last year. Or no, not Boo, Moo. Um, we called him Moo because his spots made him look like a cow. His black spots, and I get the same impression. Um, he didn't say anything yet. We need a star. We call her parts. We got a lot parts. Valentine's Day shares with you to remember. You can't do voids. 
Um, so first now, first now it's almost look kind of like Paris's because it's, the color is like my red, except it couldn't come as far down as my red did. You got more of that white like, donut nose. Robin, not problem. My goodness, you've got a whole belly. Whole belly. What's up, Robin? What do you mean? It's not your food. You want to go outside? <laughs> Yeah, it, yeah it's, I don't want to forward your microscope, but I want to get your attention. Yeah, I don't, so Trina, I were just talking about um, Robin who lives at the door and growls, and we joke that Robin's love language is growling. Like, she growls when she is hit mad, when she, but she also growls when she's trying to communicate, she'll growl when she plays. She Oh, that's how she communicates um, with us anyway. And um, I'm starting to wonder if, or what you're just talking about is that this glass door we have right behind the camera here where her litter is, um, she comes up to it and growls real softly. And for a couple days, we're kind of like, you know, why don't you just close the door and growl at Myra like that? And I don't think it's an aggressive thing. Um, we think we're just talking about the possibility that she doesn't want to bark, that she doesn't want to come to the door and just start barking to get her attention to go outside, you know, for example. Um, and um, maybe she's just she's just trying to get everybody to get our attention without being loud and disruptive, especially with Myers. Why do you run here? Then what are you doing down here, baby? Then why didn't you bring it down? Go get it. We talked about this. You yeah. said the deal was. Yeah. Good night, remember? If you bring it, or if you, the internet goes out on your iPad, you got to bring it down in order to come down here. So go get your iPad. Yeah. Yep, and come back down. Yep. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to take you and you're going to go to bed now. Mm -hmm. Then go get your iPad. Mm -hmm. Bella? That must be in games. Well, if you want to fix, you need to go get it. That's your responsibility. Oh, she just okay, so the internet's just fine on your iPad? Mm hmm Ah, uh, okay. Then you need to go back up to your room still. Bella, you gotta go to bed early tonight because you got school tomorrow. I know. I'm gonna check her because she's Oh, look at Lunar. He is such a little mom's boy. He's like, I've got my mama back.
right. That was, that was without. Oh, right. Yeah. That went in there. And it was frozen. Um, and it just blocked it. And then it went on. So it didn't seem to be broken. And I said, oh, I said that I was going to have to fix it. The money not work anyway. So then I must be my old she pointed. Um, so. She's being that her cover, she can bring it down. Yeah. But like, I'm just, I'm not sure what possesses her. Yeah. Does she just want us to talk about it?
What are you doing? What are you doing, Daisy? Dirt. I, I know. I, oh, excuse me. That's because it's the spot right here. Oh, okay. I know. It's, oh, it's just like one thing. Oh, it's just Your black one? Hang it up right there. Huh? Oh, that's Spike. That wall is 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 basically the wall for the Four Seasons room. Yeah. Yeah. But he's he's in the Four Seasons room barking. Yeah. Yeah. That and that surprise didn't do a fantastic job at insulating in between the walls.
Myra, what are you doing? What are you doing? Myra, be gentle, sweetie.
Ready for your cup? Are you ready for your cup? You're fine. Yeah, maybe. Are you second guessing it? Just so I need to aim at my food. We're having such a good time. All right. So I put on um, a pair of these wool. They are incredible. Oh. I have, like, I always thought that it was a load of crap, but then, like, I was really yeah, 17, no less. I know. And so we went from no lights to all lights? What is this? <laughs> I know. I know. I know. What happened? Not get any lights. Why are, why are you always screwing off their bed? We make it nice. We make Myra. It. Her poor puppy, they just get so rattled. Myra. Her poor puppies. Go see your babies. That's a very nice bed you got there. Yes, very nice. Just gonna let you know how it is. Oh, we don't have nicknames for all these guys, too. Any nicknames? Oh, man, yeah, you're right. You want to call him Cheddar Boo? Cheddar Boo. I want to call him Cheddar Boo because of the orange, but he looks like Moo. Moo, he looks like. Oh. Because of his, his Moo cap spots. Oh, I need to like flip side of it. I have a lot of it. Oh, why is Burby FaceTiming me? Oh boy. Go down. Go down. Blankies. You do have a heart. <laughs> Man, I remember when you said you're never gonna have a dog ever again. And now here you are fluffing their blankets. <laughs> blankets and pulling them up in the blankets to make them cozy. Yeah, I know. It, it, it makes it even better because I was just like, oh, we haven't had them on YouTube in the last couple days. And so then you spruce up their pen to, not their pen, but you spruce up their like comfort to. Yeah. Like, here, guys, your moms haven't seen you, but. Oh, the mighty have come on. Oh, goodness. <laughs> what? I'm gonna plug this in.
Yeah, I just noticed that she's no longer on Mummy Network. Alright, bring it over here, Bella. Are you not playing it? Are you not using it? Thank you for bringing it down. Can you get one of your your, your um maintenance and girl? I can't remember if we reached four or eight, but we have to reach eight. So I think we can reach. I've hugged you at least four times since I've been home, so <laughs> we're probably in growth. No, you already had four candy bars. Yeah, you already had plenty of dessert. No, no. Plenty of Kinder bars. Kinder. Yeah, Kinder Woo Woo. Kinder Woo Woo. Even Daisy knows not to take her ice cream. Uh, let's get you signed. Where's your. Oh. I, was, I even held it on that page, Bella, in case you. Because I'm. I think. Hey, sweetie. Hey, Stop. listen. Listen to mom. Listen. Yell at us over the monitor and say, Internet's on my iPad, and I'll pull it up on my phone and you should be able to find me, okay? Did you hear me? Yeah. No, what's, what did mom say? We can, we can put if, I, if I yell on the camera, you will go on it. I'll pull up Mommy Network so you can just turn it on up in your bedroom, okay? No. No, you already had yours. So now, no. Do so you want to go to bed now? Here. You're on the network. See. Then go take. Greens go. Yeah, go take my network upstairs. And... Daisy, have you been licking my? Daisy's been licking my spoon. Okay. <laughs> Just grab me one of the black ones from Panda. That would much better. We don't have spoons. Huh? We don't have black spoons from Panda. We have black ones. Dang it! You're right. They didn't. Mommy. Silly mommy. Come on, Bubba. Yeah, I wear. Yeah, I wear. Remind me. Oh, where's my ice cream? That's up above you. Oh. <laughs> Did she move it or was it you? <laughs> Jesus, that was about to be dead. Come on. Come on. Maybe, maybe we can wear that tomorrow, Bella. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, Bella, Bella. No, mommy. No, mommy. I want a long time away from other dogs. <laughs> That's what she wants. 
You're <laughs> leaving me down in the basement. Yeah. But I can't we go to the construction. Oh, she does want water. One day I'll make it. <laughs> Get back. She's gonna think you're taking her food. I know. I don't know. Trust me, the, the laziness in me feels the same way. <laughs> I brought this awesome blanket to keep me warm while I devour a pound of chocolate ice cream. <laughs> Yeah. Never gonna get Levi ice cream. <laughs> yes. It had the buttons. What? It, yeah. What that? Oh. People who are so bad. Daisy, stop. Oh. Trying to lift my lid. Yeah. So. Extra oh, yeah, that is normal. Oh, okay. The one from TJ Maxx. Uh, if it wasn't the one from TJ, if it was from the other store, then it's fine because it's not in my brush. Okay. Yeah, it was from Plato's Closet because I saw there was like the hole. Yeah, then, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is frosty. Frosty. Maybe. It's like the the whole thing probably melted. Oh, mine's not frosty. Yours isn't frosty at all? No. What do you mean? No, that's the fudge, sweetie. No. You, get the you don't hear that? You the ice. Oh, I just said you'll hear some ice crystals. No. I don't know what I'm yet. What's that? You want to trade? I'm very good. I'm trying to get up. Want to trade? Sure. I just want to see if it's actually a problem with it. Yeah, if it, it is, is, I can see it. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go. Here. No, you can't keep your don't have no. to. Okay, you know. No, take this. I don't want to keep your. No, take this. Take it. You can take it later. Actually, you can give it to me. <laughs> I was hoping it was just the top. Right. But it's not supposed to be crispy. I see, yeah. This is definitely not a one sitting type of mm. ice cream. It was the only one I had. That one looked like. Oh, it is awesome. But it is, it it's is boring. A, well, it's too boring. <laughs> And it's just really rich. Oh, you also brought me a drink. Yeah, all right. That's for me, yes.
This one is so much better than that one. <laughs> <laughs> And Daisy wasn't trying to look my lip. She did look my lip. Oh, that's why I was screeching at her. But I knew that if I told you right then, you were going to come in and be like, Daisy. But now it's too late. Oh, she's partying. Is it still frosty deeper down? Oh, yeah. It is? Yeah. Seriously, like the whole thing really yeah. fell. Yeah. It was a thing when I opened it, was that it was like it was like an upside down and melted. Oh. And like my throat was upside down. Jeez. AirPods again. This one is like transparent and the other one is an earplug nice. because they're not both reading. So it's it's uh, defaulting to transparency and the one that's reading.
Mommy, go see your puppies. Go see your puppies.
No. Remy.
Oh shit, Is she outside? 